a long story short, I'm Kijan Haynes and we're still on vaccine diplomacy, but today we want to stress on the diplomacy part. So let's state from the beginning, you cannot like the prime minister, you cannot like the government, but you can also absolutely admit that this country is being hit in all directions. See, the COVAX facility, like so many things that require human beings to actually be decent, started off with good intentions, but then just ended up being every man for himself, like Billy Zane in Titanic. <laughs> And I'm not gonna lie, for years I've wondered, well, what did he do with the girl afterwards? Did he keep her? Did he just throw her away? What happened? Anyhow, but back to it. Remember we chided the government last week for, for really putting all their eggs into the Kofax basket? Old people say, no run down bus. And no Kovacs. Well, in what was a rare somewhat admission of making a mistake from a politician, they kind of did come out and say, <laughs> yeah, this Kovacs thing is kind of trash. We were told maybe we'll get vaccines at the end of January. That is when the Kovacs had looked like it was going to work and work early. Then January came and went. Then we told maybe towards the end of February and everybody's waiting. Then we told we'll get by the. In fact, I was at one time I was given an exact date. Twenty second of March. When I did not get vaccinated, out of the two thousand that came from Barbados, I was told, and I agreed, I could wait until the twenty second of March. That's next week. As I speak to you now, we have no confirmation that on March 22nd, we're gonna get vaccines. To be fair, how could you know? COVAX was over a hundred countries pooling their money, putting up to buy vaccines and helping with the research in the hope that it would be evenly distributed when the time came out. So everybody was going in on even footing and then poof, chaos. And the Prime Minister, they, well, we shouldn't have been so ready to rely on the good in humanity. There was an arrangement put in place with power and, of course, WHO, and, of course, the world's trading and making of vaccines. That system is now in deep, deep disarray because of the behavior of human beings to other human beings. Those who have money, they have taken the position that until we vaccinate all of our people, none of the vaccine that we have cornered will be made available. Okay, so we go to plan B. Well, technically it's plan A. Remember, not India, China. The office of the Prime Minister in a media release says the bilateral discussions between Prime Minister Rowley and President Xi focused on several matters of mutual interest. The China Global Television Network reports that President Xi said China is willing to strengthen ties in several sectors, including energy, telecommunications and infrastructure and vowed to extend cooperation in digital economy, new energy, and interconnectivity. But the fact that Terence Dial Singh was in that meeting means you know the talk of vaccines came up. That's what everybody's been reporting. Because remember, China was always plan A. The government of Trinidad and Tobago has begun talks with China on possibly acquiring COVID-19 vaccines from that country. Minister of Health Terence Dial Singh said the Ministry of Health has been in bilateral talks with countries and manufacturers about COVID-19 vaccines since October 1st, 2020. Countries that were willing to speak to us at that time would have been China. All right, but here's the hitch. China's vaccine is still not WHO approved and you know how important that seems to be to the government. So now they've backed themselves into a corner here. So the backup plan is now falling through and the country itself from what I've seen on social media is very skeptical about Chinese vaccines. And that's fair, you can absolutely be. But you know what I'm also worried about? How our neighbors up north feel about us going to China. Because as much as we've been saying on this show that India and China don't really pull, <laughs> the US and China are not having the best time either. 
It was a war of words as China and U.S. officials from the Biden administration met for the first time in Anchorage, Alaska. Expectations were low going into the meeting, but few had expected opening remarks to turn into both sides trading barbs on a range of issues. We'll also discuss our deep concerns with actions by China, including in Xinjiang, Hong Kong, Taiwan, cyber attacks on the United States, economic coercion toward our allies. Mr. Yang also had something to say about the U.S. human rights record. Wow, that's not something you see every day. Imagine two superpowers sitting around a table just trading barbs back and forth about who has the worst human rights record. And strangely enough, both sides are actually right because their human rights records suck. Meanwhile, vaccine diplomacy is putting us all in a situation where we're going to just about anyone who wants to help us. But depending on who we ask, we might upset another government that we have good relations with. Even the Chinese themselves are saying that we are aware that if the Caribbean partners with China, the U.S. might get upset. Meanwhile, the Chinese themselves are saying, well, we'll only give vaccines, as they did with Guyana, to countries who see the world through their eyes. Did Trinidad and Tobago, via the Prime Minister, express support for China's position on Hong Kong, Xinjiang, and Taiwan, as stated in the Chinese reporting of it? So here, Emery Brown's response. Trinidad and Tobago's policy of non-interference and non-intervention is long-standing and remains in place. This was conveyed and reaffirmed at yesterday's meeting between the two heads of government. So is he saying that President Xi is lying? Or because it's not like when you, you ask a question specifically, what was the time? I have a rado watch. It's essentially the kindergarten argument. Well, we not friends with Michael, and so you can't be friends with him, or then you can't sit with us. Before you start, both governments have looked into China for collaboration, and this is previous governments, UNC, PNM, don't matter, because, you know, the Kuva Hospital didn't just fall from the sky. They had help. So it's not that this government only want to work with China, they don't care about India. No, that's not it at all. It's all about playing the game, and that's, at the end of the day, that's all it comes down to. Remember the Newsday's really powerful article about how shady India's track record with, humanity, with human rights is as well? International human rights groups are gravely concerned that Indian government policies have put minority groups, especially Muslims, under increasing pressure. We're talking about brutal crackdowns against the government's critics, arbitrary detentions, internet shutdowns, um, increased media censorship and uh, a decline in press freedom. How much does that concern you? In the end, you realize, or at least I've realized, that diplomacy isn't necessarily about what's right ethically. It's about what you're willing to overlook because this country has something that you want, and this happens to everyone. President Biden is facing growing criticism for failing to sanction Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman for the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. This comes after the U.S. released a new intelligence report Friday directly blaming him for proving Khashoggi's murder in 2018. Activists say that is not good enough. First, Anna, historically, uh, and even in recent history, Democratic and Republican administrations, there have not been sanctions put in place for the leaders of foreign governments where we have diplomatic relations and even where we don't have diplomatic relations. And yet, there are so many rules and protocol channels that it's exhausting. Like, our government, and I mean as a nation, we've pretty much always had this route of non-interference and not non-intervention, although that particular phrase is more attributed to the PNM. But we are so small in this grand scheme of these superpowers fighting that we are the a rubber ducky trying to stay afloat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean in a hurricane. So to bring it back to vaccines and our position, we've noted previously on this show that the way to India's heart seems to be through letters of adulation. While Dominica, Barbados, Guyana, every island write the government of India in beautiful poetic language, I must say, and requested free vaccines. They were sitting on their hands. And we've seen our CARICOM neighbors write these letters, but let's be real, Dr. Rowley does not seem to be that guy. Should he be? I leave that up to you to decide. Is it pride? Maybe. Is it that we too proud to beg?
<laughs> but in the end, you have to realize that in the world, no one is playing fair in this game. The big countries, the ones who exacerbated this mess in the first place with their mask and wearing a mask as political, all of a sudden, they're the ones hoarding all the vaccines and then boasting about how they're vaccinating most of their adult population. None of this seems to come down to protocol anymore. It's just pure vibes and, well, manipulation. And <laughs> this is one of the few times that you see that our government is actually playing by the rules. I'm not going to lie, sometimes I wonder if um, this guy was foreign affairs minister. He might have gotten some things done. But I'll tell you one thing that I absolutely will not agree with in any shape or form is this. Or what? Yeah, no thanks. Let's take a break.